What's up everybody? Welcome to the Amateur Coder channel. Today we're going to be checking out the Git package. The thing that's special about the Git package is not only is it a state manager and dependency injector, we also get navigation controls, which makes navigation super easy. So here's the app we're going to make. We're going to have a normal state like we usually do. We're going to be able to stream data from Firebase. We can update this to 101 and it should update there. And then we're going to have some navigation tools. So we're going to be able to go to another page. We're going to be able to show a snack bar like that, a dialog, and a bottom sheet. So let's get into it. Before we start, I wanted to mention something. In the last video about States Rebuilder, it seemed that some people thought I was saying it's the best package and the one you should use. I think the best package is the one that you're most used to. All of them will solve the problem and they all have their pros and their cons. You can't really go wrong with most of the, the top state management packages. The same thing applies to the Git package. It has its benefits, I think, and I'm sure there might be some downfalls and that doesn't make it the best package that there is out there, but I still think it's pretty good. Also, the author of this package has been the source of some controversy, and I'm just gonna judge this package based on what it is. We're gonna put all of that aside and we're just gonna look at what it's capable of. So first I wanted to go over the navigation because I think that's what really sets this package apart. In order to have navigation work, you first have to wrap your app in the get material app instead of just a material app. So you do that, add in the get package. Of course, make sure it's in your pubspec.yaml and update that. So the re reason this navigation really impressed me is so let's, let's pretend we're gonna go to the next screen. We have this go to next. So then other screen, which is just the basic other screen down here. Let's say we wanted to do it normally. We would have to do navigator.push and then you need the context and then the route, right? Material, page route, then builder, then context, and then finally your other page. So that's what it looks like, but we have a problem. We don't have the context. So we need to pass in the context here and only then be able to do it. The get package makes it super simple. So you have that complex line for get. All you need to do is get dot two and then other. And that's it. That's as simple as it is. This is how, that's all you need to do to go to the other screen. So we click on it, it takes us to the other screen and that's that. So then we have the show snack bar. Show snack bar is just as simple as the, the going to another screen. You do get snack bar. Then you have your title message. We'll say, hey there. And then the message inside, which will be snack bar is easy. You save that. And then when you show the snack bar, you have a nice looking snack bar like that. And it's super easy. Then you have a bunch of properties in here, which you, which you can adjust like snack position, snack position bottom, and it'll show up at the bottom. You can change color, whether it's dismissible, duration, on tap, anything you want. Show dialog, also just as simple. Just do get, default dialog. You have a title field, and then you have content field which you can make it any widget, but inside we're gonna be just a simple text widget. You can say too easy, and then boom, dialogue works. Notice again, for all of these, you would need a context, but here you can call them from anywhere. You can have it be a global function where you just call it and it'll show up. And then bottom sheet as well. Same thing, get bottom sheet. Then inside, you just have your widget of the bottom sheet. I was gonna copy paste the container. So you see it's just a normal container with some list tiles and that's that's literally it. You save it and have a beautiful bottom sheet like that pop up. So that's navigation. All of these have a lot of properties you can look into and there's other ways to do navigation like name navigation where you can where you can set your routes in the main and use those. There's a lot of options you could check out in the documentation, which will be in the description. 
So now let's get into the state management of get package. So this is where it becomes a little bit controversial. The author of get says that his package takes up less memory than even provider and block. But the creators of provider and block disagree with him a little bit. Personally, I'm not educated enough on any of these packages to really know who's right or anything. But I know that the get package does work for state management. Just don't know how efficient it is. So we're going to create a simple counter state. And in order to set up the state, we're going to have a class counter state. And then we need to extend this thing called a get controller. That's going to give us all the things that we need from the get package. So the state is managed a little differently. Let's say we have our counter. This is what we've seen in the other packages, but in get, you need to wrap this counter in a special thing called int x. So once you do that, you need to add dot obs at the end to make it observable. And then from there, you can work with it as you want. So let's say we want to increment the counter. We just do counter dot value and you see all the properties it has. So we need the value property and we will increment it. So a little different setup from the other state management, but not too difficult in my opinion. So now the way to display, there's a couple options. There's get builder, get X, OBX and mix and builder. This is the, we're going to use OBX, which you just observe the, the state. I think it's the most simple one to set up. I haven't looked too much into these. I've used get builder, but but if you're looking for different ways to display the state or you're having some problems with OBX, just look at the documentation. I'm sure there's some solutions to that. So, all right, the way we're gonna get the state, basically like we would retrieve the provider. We will do final counter state and we'll say, we'll call it counter state equals get dot put and then counter state. So uh, the way I read this is you're putting the counter state into this variable. Not too difficult. And then once you have that, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. So we have our floating action button at the bottom. Let's say we want to cause that to increment the state. All we need is the counter state and then increment. And that is it. You are able to increment the state. So in order to display, we're going to use the OBX, like I, like I said, and inside it takes a function and then we return a text. We'll have it say state. And then right next to it, it's going to be counter state dot counter. And we'll just make it a string too. Make sure we do plus. All right, so we have zero and then incrementing works perfect. So one thing to know about get is there's not anything special to do with streams. So even one of his points in the documentation says that you just use a normal stream controller and a stream builder for it. There's no special thing like stream provider that provider has or things like that. Also, I don't think I noted this before, but according to the author, you won't ever need to use stateful widgets anymore with this package. But I want to demonstrate how you would make the streams work with get just because sometimes you need to have streams. For example, my book club app needed a lot of streams. So to do that, we set up a stream controller. And for us, it's going to be an integer. And you need to make sure you dispose of your stream. And once you set up the disposing, we could set up a function called start stream. So just like we did in the last video, we can stream from our Firebase.
and we could listen to those changes and add them to our stream controller as they come in. All right, so our stream is set up. Then in the home widget, we can easily start that stream using the same counter state that we declared at the top. And then to display, we use stream builder. And this doesn't have much to do with the package. It's just mostly flutter functions. But then we can return text, stream, snapshot, dot data dot to stream and then we need to provide the stream builder with the exact stream so that's located in our counter state stream controller dot stream okay so there we go if we click on it 101 comes from our database we can update it And there we go, everything works. So that's it, that's the basics of the Git package. You saw it has some stuff that makes it really simple to use and easy to implement. With this package, I really like the navigation. I feel like it makes it super easy. Like to make a snack bar, that's literally all you need. You don't need context or anything. To navigate between the pages, all you need to do is get to another. It doesn't get much easier than that. As far as the state management, I think I need to dig deeper into the state management to see what it's really about. Hopefully this video gave you a couple basics to get you started with Git and you can take a look for yourself to see if it works for you. Like I said at the beginning, there's no best state management package. Each of them have their own benefits and their own downsides. You just have to experience and then judge it for yourself. But that's it for this video. This code will be on GitHub like always. If you have any questions or anything, please leave them in the comments. Like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.